Welcome everybody, this is Alan with Daily Armor of God. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're all doing well. This is my reading the New Testament in 33 Days Project. We are on day 27. 27, we are almost there. So, today we'll be reading Hebrews chapters 7 through 13. Finishing up Hebrews. So, let us go ahead and get started in Hebrews um so yesterday I was I said that I believe that Hebrews was written by Paul and there's lots of things pointing to that now I could probably do a whole Bible study on why that is but uh, yeah just just know it probably was Paul and um, he probably wrote almost all of it um, at the beginning of the Apostles ministry at the at the beginning before um, you know before the Gentiles could be saved so it was writing to the Hebrews about who to believe in that Christ and who he is so and then uh, I believe later on he wrote chapter 13 towards the end of his ministry so chapter 7 Hebrews verse 1 for this Melchizedek king of Salem priest of God most high who met Abraham turning back from the striking of the kings and blessed him to whom also Abraham divided a tenth of all First indeed being interpreted king of righteousness, and then also king of Salem, which is king of peace, without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, and having been like the Son of God, remains a priest continually. And see how great this one is, to whom Abraham the patriarch also gave a tenth out of the best of the spoils, and those, indeed, out of the sons of Levi, receiving the priesthood, have a command to take tithes from the people according to the law, that is, their brothers, even though they came forth out of the loins of Abraham. And he who was not reckoned by genealogy of them received tithes from Abraham. And he has blessed him, having the promises and apart from all controversy the less is blessed by the better and here indeed men who die receive tithes and there he who is testified to that he was living and so to speak through Abraham even Levi who is receiving tithes has paid tithes for he was yet in the loins of the father when Melchizedek met him if indeed then perfection were through the Levitical priesthood for the people under it had received law, what further need, according to the order of Melchizedek, for another priest to arise and not called according to the order of Aaron? The priesthood being changed of necessity also a change comes of the law. For he of whom these things are said in another tribe has had part of whom no one gave attendance at the altar. For it is evident that out of Judah has arisen our Lord, in regard to which tribe Moses spoke nothing concerning priesthood, and it is yet more abundantly most evident, if according to likeness of Melchizedek there arises another priest who did not come according to the law of a fleshly command, but according to the power of an endless life, for he testifies, you are a priest throughout the age, according to the order of Melchizedek. For an annoying indeed comes of the command going before, because of its weakness and unprofitableness. For nothing did the law perfect, and the bringing in of a better hope through which we draw near to God. And inasmuch as it is not apart from oath, for those indeed apart from oath have become priests. And he became priest with an oath through him who is saying to him, the Lord swore and will not regret. You are a priest throughout the age according to the order of Melchizedek. By so much also has Jesus become guarantee of a better covenant. 
and those indeed are many who have become priests because by death they are hindered from remaining. And he, because of his remaining throughout the age, has inviolable priesthood, from where also he is able to save to the very end those coming through him to God, ever living to make intercession for them. For also such a chief priest was fitting for us, holy, innocent, undefiled, separate from the sinners, and having become higher than the heavens, who has no daily necessity as the chief priests to first offer up a sacrifice for his own sins, then for those of the people. For this he did once, having offered up himself, for the law appoints man as chief priest, having weaknesses, but the word of the oath that is after the law appoints the Son, having been perfected throughout the age. Chapter 8 And the sum concerning the things spoken of is, We have such a chief priest who sat down at the right hand, of the throne of the greatness in the heavens, a servant of the holy places, and of the true dwelling place which the Lord set up, and not man, for every chief priest is appointed to offer both gifts and sacrifices from where it is necessary for this one to also have something that he may offer. For if indeed he were on earth, he would not be a priest, there being the priests who are offering the gifts according to the law, who to an example and shadow serve of the heavenly things, as Moses has been divinely warned, being about to construct the dwelling place. For see, he says, that you will make all things according to the pattern that was shown to you on the mountain. But now he has obtained a more excellent service, how much he is also mediator of a better covenant, which has been sanctioned on better promises. For if that first were faultless, a place would not have been sought for a second. For finding fault, he says to them, Behold, days come, says the Lord, and I will complete with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah a new covenant, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day of my taking them by their hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, because they did not remain in my covenant, and I did not regard them, says the Lord. Because this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord, giving my laws into their mind, and I will write them on their hearts, and I will be to them for a God, and they will be to me for a people. And they will not each teach his neighbor and each his brother, saying, Know the Lord, because they will all know me. From the small one to them, of them to the great one of them, because I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and I will remember their sins and their lawlessness no more. That verse right there, verse 12, that's just amazing if you think about it. God is and was, was and is and still, uh, still is, merciful to our unrighteousness and our sins. And, and he will not remember our sins and our lawlessness anymore. So that to me tells me that e even when we sin and we repent of our sins after we, we are saved and trust fully in the blood of Jesus Christ, we do not need to feel guilty for our sins when we fail in the flesh because God he says right here, he will remember our sins and our lawlessness no more. So, and uh, I know it's easier said than done, but we need to not beat ourselves up when we do fail. Obviously, we should be repenting for what we've done. But we do not have to ask for forgiveness of our sins anymore. After we have accepted Christ as our true Lord and Savior and trust in the blood of Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross for us and trust in the gospel, which is 1 Corinthians 51 through 4, we don't need to say, Lord, Lord God, please forgive me because he already paid the price for our sins, past, present, and future sins. So we don't need to say, oh, please forgive me, Lord. But we still need to repent of our sins and ask for his strength 
so that we don't sin again. So that we don't uh, fall into the same sin over and over and over. We will sin again. Uh, that's just our sinful flesh. We are going to sin. And I don't like to say that because we don't want to sin, but our sinful body wants to. So, we need His strength, and that's why every day put on the full armor of God, because our body wants to sin. But the Holy Spirit inside of us, it says not to grieve the Holy Spirit. So, when we sin, we grieve the Holy Spirit. So we should try, and in our power and relying on the power of God, to not sin. But we should not ask for forgiveness of sins because Jesus Christ already paid the price. But we should, we should repent and change our ways from that sin, flee from that sin, and also let it go and not let it eat at us and feel guilty for it because that's the devil. The devil will will make you feel guilty even if you, for example, had did a sin and it was like two weeks ago, it could still be eating at you. But that's the devil doing that. We are forgiven. We are covered by the blood of Christ. If we truly believe in the gospel and what Christ did on the cross for us, we don't need to ask for forgiveness, but we do need to repent and turn from our sins. And um, also not let it eat at us. If God forgets it, then we should too and strive to move on and to learn from our mistakes leave from sin so anyway chapter 9 it had indeed then even the first dwelling place ordinances of service also a worldly sanctuary for a dwelling place was prepared the first in which was both the lampstand and the table and the bread of the presentation which is called holy and after the second veil of a dwelling place that is called Holy of Holies, heaven a golden censer, and the Ark of the Covenant overlaid with all gold, in which is the golden pot having the manna, and the rod of Aaron that budded, and the tablets of the covenant, and over it cherubim of the glory, overshadowing the proprietary covering, concerning which we are not to particularly speak now. And these things have been thus prepared, into the first dwelling place, indeed the priests go in at all times performing the services, and into the second, once in the year, only the chief priests, not apart from blood, which he offers for himself in the errors of the people. By this the Holy Spirit was making evidence that the way of the holy places has not yet been revealed, the first dwelling place yet having a standing, which is an allegory in regard to the present time in which both gifts and sacrifices are offered, which are not able, in regard to conscience, to make perfect him who is serving, only on the basis of food and drinks and different immersions and fleshly ordinances, until the time of reformation imposed on them. But Christ having come, chief priest of the coming good things, through the greater, more perfect dwelling place, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, neither through blood of goats and calves, but through his own blood, entered once into the holy places, having obtained continuous redemption. For if the blood of bulls and goats and ashes of an heifer, sprinkling those defiled, sanctifies the preferring of the flesh, how much more will the blood of Christ who through the perpetual spirit offered himself unblemished, that's key right there, unblemished, without spot, sinless, to God, purifying your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And because of this, he is a mediator of a new covenant, that his death having come for redemption of the transgressions of the first covenant, those called may receive the promise of the continuous inheritance. For where a covenant is, it is necessary to establish the death of the one having made it. For a covenant is affirmed at death, since it is not in force, 
at all when the one having made it lives. For which reason not even the first has been initiated apart from blood, for every command having been spoken according to law by Moses to all the people, having taken the blood of the calves and goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop, he sprinkled both the scroll itself and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant that God enjoined to you, and he sprinkled both the dwelling place and all the vessels of the service with blood in like manner. And with the blood almost all things are purified according to the law, and forgiveness does not come apart from blood shedding. Here's another key key thing right here. Um, I did a Bible study on the blood of Christ, the importance of, of the blood of Jesus Christ. And uh, you can find that uh, link in my playlist, my Bible study playlist. And I go into great detail about the blood. And one of them is, there is no forgiveness of sins if there's no blood shed there's no bloodshed there's no forgiveness of sins so it is vital it is vital to know how important the blood of christ actually is because you cannot even if you killed all the animals on earth all their blood would still not be enough but christ's blood shed once for all is enough past present and future sins i mean just how amazing is that and uh while i'm at it i just want to say how blessed we are that we don't have to go through that we're not under the law the law was a curse how blessed are we that we don't have to do this have to bring sacrifices and slit the throat of these innocent animals for our sins i mean we are so blessed that salvation is through faith by grace and we don't have to bring animals and be killing and go through all the rituals and sacrifices and all the laws there's so many laws we are blessed that we are not under the law anymore amen to that amen that all we have to do is have a change of heart and with our full heart with our whole heart, trust in the blood of Christ. Verse 23. It is necessary, therefore, the pattern and deed of the things in heavens to be purified with these, and the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For the, for the Christ did not enter into holy places made with hands, figures of the true, but in heaven itself, now to be manifested in the presence of God for us, nor that he may offer himself many times. This is another point that he died once for all and actually this little section here um, proves that Catholicism that Catholics who in their mass um, they're basically eating Christ's flesh and drinking his blood like literally that's what they think literally drinking and, and eating him and basically he's dying all over again no he died once he died once for all so this little part here he may offer himself many times nor that he may so only once he doesn't do it many times we're not killing christ over and over and over so even as the chief priest enters into the holy place every year with the blood of others, otherwise it was necessary for him to suffer many th times from the fountain of the world. But now he has revealed once at the full end of the ages for putting away of sin through his sacrifice. And as it is reserved for men to die once and after this judgment. So also the Christ having been offered once to bear the sins of many. Here it is. Like I just said once he died once to bear the sins of many will appear a second time apart from a sin offering for salvation to those waiting for him amen to that that is our hope we who are truly saved and who have truly trusted in the blood of christ and what he did for us and in the gospel our hope is waiting for christ to come back again to be with christ we want to get out of this sinful world and be 
with Christ in bliss and in our uh, glorified bodies. Chapter 10. For the law having a shadow of the good things coming not to the very image of the matters every year, but the same sacrifices that they offer continually, is never able to make perfect those coming near, since would they not have ceased to be offered because of those having no more conscience of sins, having been purified once? But in those sacrifices is a remembrance of sins every year, for it is impossible for the blood of goats, of bulls and goats to take away sins. For this reason coming into the world, he says, sacrifice and offering you did not will, and a body you prepared for me in burnt offerings and concerning sin offerings you did not delight. Then I said, behold, I come in a volume of the scroll it has been written concerning me to do, O God, your will. Saying above, sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and concerning sin offering, you did not will nor delight in, which are offered according to the law. Then he said, Behold, I come to do, O God, your will. He takes away the first, that he may establish the second. In which will we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Here again, Paul is saying, the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest indeed has daily stood serving and offering the same sacrifices many times that are never able to take away sins, but he, having offered one sacrifice for sin to the end, sat down at the right hand of God as to rest, expecting until he may place his enemies at his footstool. For by one offering he has perfected to the end those being sanctified. And the Holy Spirit also testifies to us, for after that he said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord, giving my laws on their hearts, and I will write on them, write them on their minds. And I will remember the sins and their lawlessness no more. And where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer offering for sin, having therefore brothers boldness for the entrance into the holy places by the blood of Jesus, which is the way he initiated for us, new and living, through the veil that is his flesh, and a great priest over the house of God. May we draw near with a true heart, in full assurance of faith, having the heart sprinkled from an evil conscience, and having the body bathed with pure water, that we may hold fast the unwavering profession of the hope, for he who promised is faithful. Isn't that amazing? That we have a faithful God? That we have an all-powerful God, an all-knowing God, a trustworthy God? In this world, we cannot fully trust any one person. The only one we can put all our trust and faith is God. And that's just amazing that we always have somebody, no matter what, They'll never leave us, never forsake us, that we can always depend on, and that is always faithful. Amen to that. Uh, verse 24. And may we consider to provoke one another to love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the custom of some, but exhorting, and so much the more as you see the day coming near. For if we are sinning willingly willingly after receiving the full knowledge of the truth there remains no more sacrifice for sins but a certain fearful looking for, for of judgment and fiery zeal about to devour the opposers anyone having set aside a law of moses dies without mercies on the basis of two or three witnesses of how much worse punishment will he be counted worthy who trampled on the son of god and counted the blood of the covenant a common thing here's another thing that I talk about in my Bible study about the blood. Those who do not think that there's any importance in the blood of Christ or treat it as a common thing, that's just not right. It's saying here, do not treat, do not trample on the blood of the Son of God and do not treat it as such a common thing. So it is so important we put much emphasis and faith in the blood of Christ. By which he was sanctified and having insulted the spirit of grace, 
For we have known him who is saying, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is fearful to fall into the hands of the living God, but call to your remembrance the former days in which, having been enlightened, you endured much conflict and sufferings, this indeed being made spectacles with both insults and afflictions, now this having become partners of those so living, for you also sympathized with my bonds, and the robbery of your goods you received with joy, knowing that you have in yourselves a better substance in the heavens, and an enduring one. You may not cast away then your boldness, which has great repayment for reward, for you have need of patience, that having done the will of God you may receive the promise. For yet in a very, very little while, he who is coming will come and will not linger, but the righteous will live by faith. And if he may draw back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those drawing back to destruction, but those believing to a preserving of soul. Chapter 11. Oh, this is a great chapter. Chapter 11 is basically all about examples of faith. And again, I, in my Bible study, I show many examples of faith uh, throughout the Old Testament and New Testament. So check that out if you guys are interested in knowing more about the blood of Christ. So, chapter 11. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the proof of matters not being seen. For by this the elders were well attested. By faith we understand the ages to have been prepared by a saying of God in regard to the things seen having not come out of the things appearing. By faith Abel offered a better sacrifice to God than Cain, through which he was testified to be righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and through it he being dead yet speaks. By faith Enoch was translated, not to see death, and was not found because God translated him. For before his translation he had been testified to that he had pleased God well, and apart from faith it is impossible to please him. For it is required of him who is coming to God to believe that he exists and that he becomes a rewarder of those seeking him. By faith Noah, having been divinely warned concerning the things not yet seen, having feared, prepared an ark to the salvation of his house, through which he condemned the world, and he became heir of the righteousness according to faith. By faith, Abraham, being called, obeyed to go forth into the place that he was about to receive for an inheritance, and he went forth not knowing to where he goes. By faith he sojourned in the land of the promise as a strange country, having dwelt in dwelling places with Isaac and Jacob, fellow heirs of the same promise. For he was looking for the city having the foundations, whose craftsman and constructor is God, and by faith Sarah herself barren, received power to conceive seed even after the time of life, seeing she judged him who promised faithful. For this reason also from one and that of one who had become dead were begun as the stars of the sky in multitude, and innumerable as the sand that is by the seashore. All these died in faith, having not received the promises, but having seen them from afar and having been persuaded, and having greeted them, and having confessed that they are strangers and sojourners on the earth. For those saying such things make apparent that they seek a country, and if indeed they had been mindful of that from which they came forth, they might have had an opportunity to return. But now they long for better, that is, heavenly. For this reason God is not ashamed of them to be called their God, for he prepared a city for them. By faith Abraham has offered up Isaac, being tried even the one having received the promises offered up his only begotten, of whom it was said, In Isaac your seed will be called, reckoning that God is even able to raise up out of the dead, from where also a figurative sense he received him. By faith concerning coming the things, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau. By faith Jacob, dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph and worshipped on the top of his staff. By faith Joseph, dying, made mention concerning the outgoing of the sons of Israel and gave command concerning his bones. By faith Moses, having been born, was hid three months by his parents because they saw the child was beautiful and were not afraid of the decree of the king. 
By faith, Moses, having become great, refused to be called son of the daughter of Pharaoh, having chosen rather to be afflicted with the people of God than to have sin's pleasure for a season. Having reckoned the reproach of the Christ greater wealth than the treasures in Egypt, for he looked to the repayment of reward. By faith he left Egypt behind, having not been afraid of the wrath of the king, for as seeing the invisible one, he endured. By faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of the blood, so that he who was destroying the firstborn might not touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea, as through dry land, which having made an attempt to cross, the Egyptians were swallowed up. By faith the walls of Jericho fell, having been surrounded for seven days. By faith Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who disbelieved, having received the spies with peace. And what will I say? For the time will fail me recounting about Gideon, also Barak, and Samson, and Jephthah, also David, and Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the mouth of the sword, were made powerful out of weakness, became strong in battle, caused armies of the foreigners to give way, women received their dead by a resurrection, and others were tortured, not accepting the redemption that they might receive a better resurrection, and others received trial of mockings and scourgings, and yet of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn apart, they were tried, they died in the killing of the sword. They went around in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, injuriously treated, of whom the world was not worthy, wandering in deserts and mountains and caves and the holes of the earth. And all these, having been testified to through faith, did not receive the promise. God, having provided something better for us, that apart from us they might not be made perfect. Chapter 12 Therefore we also, having so great a cloud of witnesses set around us, having put off every weight in the closely besetting sin, we may... Or may we run the contest that is set before us through endurance, looking to the author and perfecter of faith, Jesus, who, for the joy set before him, endured a cross, having despised shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For again consider him who endured such contradiction from the sinners to himself, that you may not be weary to, in your souls being faint. You do not yet resist the blood striving with sin, and you have forgotten the exhortation that speaks fully to you as to sons. My son, do not despise the discipline of the Lord, nor be faint, being reproved by him. For whom the Lord loves, he disciplines, and he scourges every son whom he receives. I think that's a Proverbs that uh, Paul is quoting here. Pretty sure that's Proverbs. If you endure discipline, God bears himself to you as to sons. For who is a son whom a father does not discipline? If you are apart from discipline, of which all have become partakers, then you are bastards, not sons. Then indeed we have not much rather be subject to the Father of the spirits and live. For they indeed for a few days, according to what seemed good to them, were disciplining, but he for a profit to be partakers of his separation. And all discipline for the present indeed does not seem to be of joy, but of sorrow, yet afterward it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those exercised through it. For this reason lift up the hanging down hands and the loose knees, and make straight paths for your feet, so that which is lame may not be turned aside, but rather be healed. Pursue peace with all, and the separation apart, from which no one will see the Lord, observing lest anyone be failing of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up may give trouble, and through this many may be defiled, lest anyone be a fornicator or profane person, as a sow, who in exchange for one morsel of food sold his birthright, for you know that also afterward, wishing to inherit the blessing, he was disapproved of, for he did not find a place of conversion, though having sought it with tears. For you did not come near to the mountain touched and scorched with fire, and to blackness and darkness and storm, and a sound of a trumpet, and a voice of sayings which those having heard begged that a word might not be added to them. For they were not bearing that which is commanded, and if a beast may touch the mountain, it will be stoned or shot through with an arrow. 
And, so terrible was the sight, Moses said, I am exceedingly fearful and trembling, but you came to Mount Zion, and to the city of the living God, to the heavenly Jerusalem, and to the myriads of messengers, to the assembly place and assembly of the firstborn registered heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of righteous men made perfect, and to a mediator of a new covenant, Jesus and to blood of sprinkling, speaking better things than that of Abel. Watch out lest you refuse him who is speaking, for if those did not escape who refused him who was divinely speaking on earth, much less we who turn away from him who speaks from heaven, whose voice shook the earth then, and now he has promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also heaven. And this, yet once more, makes evident the removal of things shaken, as of things having been made, that the things not shaken may remain. For this reason, receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, may we have grace, through which we may serve God well pleasingly, with reverence and fear. For our God is also a consuming fire. And finally, chapter 13, which some believe chapter 13 was written later after uh, towards the end of paul's ministry uh, some theorize that chapters 1 through 12 were written um, as he first started his ministry and chapter 13 was added later when things change when um, salvation was to the gentiles and to the jews at first it was just for the uh, lost sheep of the house of israel the chapter 13 let brotherly love remain, do not be forgetful of hospitality, for through this some entertained messengers unaware. Be mindful of those in bonds as having been bound with them, of those maltreated as yourselves also being in the body. The marriage is to be honored by all, and the bed undefiled. For God will judge whoremongers and adulterers, be without covetous behavior, being content with the things present, for he said, no, I will leave, no, nor forsake you. Let we boldly say, The Lord is to me a helper, and I will not fear what man will do to me. Be mindful of those leading you, who spoke to you in the word of God, who, considering the outcome of their behavior, imitate their faith. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, and today, and for all ages. Do not be carried away with strange and manifold teachings, for it is good that by grace the heart is confirmed, not with meats in which they who were occupied were not profited. We have an altar from which they who are serving the dwelling place have no authority to eat. For those beasts who, whose blood is brought for sin into the holy place to the chief priests, of these the bodies are burned outside the camp. For this reason also Jesus, that he might sanctify the people through his own blood, suffered outside the gate. Now then we may go forth to him outside the camp bearing his reproach. For we have no abiding city here, but we seek the coming one. Through him, then, we may always offer up a sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of lips, giving thanks to his name. Do not be forgetful of doing good and of fellowship, for God is well pleased with such sacrifices. Be obedient to those leading you, and, and be subject for the, these watch for your souls, as about to give account that they may do this with joy, and not sign for this is unprofitable to you. Pray for us, for we trust that we have a good conscience, willing to behave well in all things, and I call on you to do this more abundantly, that I may be restored to you more quickly. And the God of peace, who brought up the great shepherd of the sheep out of the dead, by the blood of a perpetual covenant, our Lord Jesus, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, doing in you that which is well pleasing before him, through Jesus Christ, to whom is the glory through the ages of the ages. Amen. And I beg you, brothers, endure the word of the exhortation, for I have also written to you through few words. Know that the brother Timotheus is released, with whom I will see you, if he may come more shortly. Greet all those leading you, and all the holy ones. Those from Italy greet you. The grace is with you all. Amen. So that's another thing, that another reason why people think that uh, Paul wrote Hebrews, because this last, well, many things, but here's one of the things. 
In the past few days, we are reading all the epistles that Paul wrote, the ones we know for sure. And how does Paul end his epistles? Usually with this exact same saying, grace is with you all. Grace is with us all. So that's just one of many other reasons why I think, I believe, Paul wrote Hebrews. It just has a similar style and there's just so many things here and there. I could, like I said, I could do a whole Bible study on why Paul wrote Hebrews, why I think Paul wrote Hebrews. So just one of many things. So that's Hebrews, guys. Um, I really like Hebrews. You know, Hebrews is kind of a hard epistle to understand because just like Acts, there's different things going on. Like I said, I think that chapters 1 through 12 were written be, uh, when Paul first started his ministry, which means it was for the Hebrews, or the, for the lost sheep of the house of Israel only. But then towards the end, chapter 13 um, was for, towards the end of his uh, ministry, towards the end of his life, where it was salvation was for um, you know the Greeks and the Jews anyone who's not a Jew anyone who's not a Hebrew so you have to have discernment and um, there's different dispensations throughout not just Hebrews but the whole Bible that we have to take into account but I really like it because even though it was mainly written for Hebrews, there's a lot we can learn from it. And a lot of things pointing to Christ as the Messiah. Christ, who Christ was, and what he did for us. The who and the what. So, it's a great epistle. So, that's going to be it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching and listening. Hope you all have a great evening, morning, noon, wherever you're at. And as always, TTFN, ta, ta for now. Take care, God bless. Remember to put God first in everything you do. Trust in Him, have faith in Him, and wait upon Him. You'll never be sorry. We'll see you tomorrow for, uh, we'll start with James, and we'll read through Second Peter. So thanks again, and take care.